Hey everyone, welcome to the Incubator Podcast. I'm your co-host, Darren Boyd. And this is Sabir Saran. Thank you very much for tuning into the Incubator Podcast, everyone. We are excited today to have Steve Biznet from Dell Technologies. He is the global field CTO for PowerFlex. And we're going to get more into what all that means. But in a net sum, from my view, Dell is playing a pivotal role in what we call hybrid cloud and in the cloud transformation space as a whole. And that's what we're going to unpack uh, for you today. But before we get too far into it, Steve, it would be great for you to share uh, with our audience and listeners a little bit more about yourself and your background. Sure. Yeah. So I've uh, been around quite a while in the technology industry. In fact, I started my career uh, very early on. Uh, I've done everything from uh, the customer side of the house. In fact, uh, coming to Dell was my first you know, trip down being at a vendor. Uh, before then, I was CTO of managed service providers, uh, dealing very much with the customer side of the world. Um, dabbled in everything from systems deployment to application development to you name it. Uh, but it wasn't until I came to Dell back in, I don't know, nine years ago. Actually, I'm coming up on my nine year, th nine year anniversary. Um, it was about a year after I got here, or a little less than that, um, that at the time, PowerFlex came to the market. And it was a it was a, a shaker, right? It was a transformational technology. And I jumped on board and said I wanted to know everything I could about the technology. And well, here we are today. No, that's great. And maybe you can walk us through a little bit about what uh, what PowerFlex is. The Power family is is a really broad portfolio. Um, and, and maybe we start all the way back. We had some early acquisitions. You've been evolving some of those acquisitions over time. So, so what is PowerFlex? How did it get here? And then maybe we'll jump into some of those use cases. Absolutely. So um, a little about nine years ago, give or take, um, at the time, VCE was the company I had worked for. We were bought by Dell, uh, by EMC at the time. Um, we made an acquisition of a small company that did software-defined storage. Now, I'm not going to use that name for y'all because ultimately it's one of those faux pas, right? It's like a four-letter word for me uh, that I like to move forward from and say, hey, it's not my grandma's car, right? Um, we all know how grandma's car was, how it smelled and how it drove and all that kind of stuff. And over time, uh, that product that was purchased nine years ago has turned into such an amazing technology, uh, thus deserving the name Power, right? One of the one of the many Power products that we have, because it does so much under the covers. Now, uh, interesting enough, as that technology has progressed, when we first brought it in, um, I don't know that we really knew what to do with it. Right. I mean, we were a big sand company. We sold massive sands, big sheet metal. Uh, and here's this software defined storage solution that was rocking the world, but it was in a very much a niche use case. Right. Customers loved it because uh, it was very command line driven. It didn't even have a UI when it first rolled out. Uh, but over time and as it progressed, customers started saying, hey, it'd be great if it had a UI. It'd be great if it had this, that, and whatever. Uh, it wasn't until probably five, six years ago. Uh, that PowerFlex moved from where it was in the HCI server business into the storage BU. Once that transformation happened, Dell just doubled down. We saw its potential. We saw where it was going to go. We saw it as a transformative technology. The problem was it still was uncomfortable, right? We were still a, it's complicated on our status page because we had VMware in the house, right? So you had VMware, we had PowerFlex. They both did the same thing. Who wins, right? And we really didn't gain a lot of traction under our feet until that separation happened. Uh, but as you can tell, we grew and grew and grew over the years, really taking over a lot of things from data services uh, to really building out a rich UI to giving a lot of tons of automation and orchestration behind the product. Uh, but it, we really got our sea legs, I guess you'd say, once that separation of VMware happened and we could show the world that we could run both VMware and anything else. And that's where ultimately PowerFlex really started to become a you know a name brand in the home at that point. Yeah, and if you really look at it, so you've got the word power in there, and then you've got flex, and you've got so much flexibility with everything from how you deploy to um, how you scale, massive scale options. You've got even flexibility around consumption. So maybe you can walk Correct. us through, I don't know where an appropriate place is to start. I don't know if we start a little bit of the architecture, maybe we start at the use cases, but but hopefully we can start to peel back. Um, how does somebody approach uh, uh, the power portfolio more specifically? How do we get into PowerFlex? 
and and how do we start marrying that to our our needs or maybe even just a little bit even further back is steve what does powerflex mean to uh the world at large today from the te technology base uh, you have enterprise customers dell is uh, is a transformative force in the cloud evolution space so where is powerflex fitting into that overall story for dell's clients i think that's probably the best place to start right if we go back to understanding what does powerflex solve Right. I mean, that's one of the number one challenges customer asks me all the time is, hey, this PowerFlex thing sounds like a 1.0 application. Sounds amazing. Like it solves everything under the sun, including making my coffee and potentially even, you know, making my family and my wife happy. But the truth is PowerFlex has a very valid place of where it fits and it solves a very specific use case in the fact that customers today have challenges, right? Massive challenges in their data center as they bring in workloads as they work to try to solve those workloads, they're bringing in new infrastructure, right? They're constantly dropping it on the data center room floor, whether it's traditional three tier, whether it's hyper converge, whether it's um, you name it, doesn't matter, direct attached storage, they're dropping infrastructure to solve problems. And then inevitably, right? The, the, the everyday problem happens. I need specialized workloads, things like Exadata, SQL, massive performance. So now I got to go buy more gear. And then we all know what's happening to the industry with things like um, next generation applications and microservices that are breaking the scale up methodology saying, you got to scale out. Well, that then now causes even more infrastructure to solve for. So then the challenges begin, right? The, the, the thing that causes the whole situation to be evaluated, and that is your costs go up. Uh, you're managing all these different components of infrastructure, complexity, um, silos, right? You're creating stranded silos of, of storage and capacity. But the one that I like to harp on the most, and that's the one that is the, in my opinion, the unseen killer from all the years of me being a managed service provider and being a, you know, the CTO of the organization. The one thing that kept me up at night was how do I life cycle all this stuff? How do I manage from an infrastructure all this crap in my data center and make sure it keeps up with what I need from a security perspective, uh, from a, a lifecycle management perspective? That's the challenge. So then the question is, how do you solve it, right? How do you solve what you've created, the merry-go-round we live on? Well, to, to quote IDC, IDC came out with a paper a little while ago, and their answer to solve the problem was kind of like one of those duh moments, right? You know, like you're like, hey, this is just makes sense. And that is the only way you solve the problem is consolidation. You got to start consolidating all those big things or all those boxes on the data center room floor to a singular platform. The challenge is, hey, I could just drop a new widget in the data center, move all my workloads, but I just kick the can down the road, right? I just caused the problem to move to another platform. Mm -hmm. So you got to take it another step further. The only way you effectively consolidate is to move to something that is flexible. And unfortunately, IDC took it the next step, and I love it. They went down the path of saying, hey, the only way you can do it is to move something that is software defined. That then opens the conversation, what is software defined that is a great consolidation platform? That's where PowerFlex enters the conversation. So PowerFlex ultimately takes the elements of traditional three tier and hyper converge and combines them together in the same technology. So we grab from this world of, hyper, of traditional three tier, the ability of scaling our storage and our compute separately. That's a huge problem that customers are struggling with, right? They have headed down this path of hyper converge and you know, God bless them, they're halfway into this and they realize they're either heavy in storage or they're heavy in compute. That's a challenge now they have to solve for. Well, I can deploy my solution as compute and storage completely separated. So now I can solve that scale up problem, no matter how you approach it. Need more compute, just add compute. Need more storage, add more storage. The other thing from a uh, traditional three tier that we grab is the construct of not binding you to a hypervisor. So now, you know, we got these customers out there knocking down our doors saying, hey, I'm not so sure I'm loving this Broadcom state. Right. And I have to often say to them, well, you have a couple of choices. You can do the knee jerk reaction, rip them out and start all over your choice. Right. Or you move to a platform that allows me to run any potential hypervisor or any potential OS. And that's what we grab from the traditional three tier is that ability of not binding you to a hypervisor. Bring on bare metal, bring on other OSs, bring on other hypervisors. 
That's what we do. Now, we don't stop there. We also grab from the constructs of hyperconverge, being the fact that we are, in essence, a hyperconverge under the covers, right? We are a construct built on software defined infrastructure. So we are just that. We drop nodes in the environment and scale out. And then on top of that, because we are software defined, we do lifecycle management, which is a beast of a challenge in the traditional three tier world, right? So you take those elements, combine them together, you now have a platform that can solve for that mass amount of different components on the data center room floor, bringing it to a centralized system, running any potential OS, any hypervisor. And here's the kicker. I can do that on-prem or I can do that in the cloud. It doesn't matter. It's just software. And that's the cool part about what PowerFlex stands for is it literally takes over the data center room floor, allowing for all of these different workloads running in a single system, whether it's on-prem or in cloud. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Um, the heterogeneity is is really interesting. To your point, you are so flexible that you can really take on any workload. You could do it at performance scale, enterprise features, et cetera. Um, and, and like security is not an afterthought as well, right? I Correct. think your FIPS 140-2, but um, you have so many security features baked into the product as well. So now you can do really any of those elements, which is fascinating to begin with, um, all at attractive price points as well, which is which is also really great. What so how do you see you entering an enterprise um, an enterprise customer? Where's the natural entry point then that you find? And maybe it's, look, I can come in from any angles. I can come in from the developers, right. the product teams, the traditional IT folks. But what, what does a traditional path look like? How do you start to get your arms around that kind of ecosystem, knowing that you could do all of those pieces? Yeah, so for many years, in fact, PowerFlex is known internally to us as the Pac-Man of the data center. Right. It's one of those things you release it and it just starts taking over like a and I don't want to use the word virus. It's a horrible thing in our world, but it takes over very quickly like a virus, because inevitably what a customer sees is that, oh, my gosh, I can run this workload and I can run that workload. But the problem is, is it's kind of like eating an elephant. Right. If you try to take the elephant on all in one bite, you're going to fail. So we have learned over time that you can overwhelm a customer or overwhelm a campaign if we try to attack the whole data center. It's best, just like you do an elephant, eat it one bite at a time. So what we've often do and how we approach this is we look for the one use case, the one workload that makes sense. And let's start there. Now, the cool part is, is PowerFlex takes on pretty much any workload. So pick one. Right? What is the compelling event that the customer is going through at this moment? Is it a storage refresh? Fine, then let's get the storage guys in here and sell it as a software-defined storage solution. Is it a compute refresh? Great. Let's go after the compute, even though I have to bring some storage to get the system ultimately running. Let's go after the, the compute side of the house. Right? Maybe it's a specific application, or maybe it's a Broadcom to something else, or maybe it is, hey, I got to take on containers, and I don't even know where to start. So ultimately for us, it's just like eating an elephant. One bite at a time, find the workload. Let's put that workload on the system. And before you and I even have a chance to think about it, customers moving the next workload and the next workload, realizing that PowerFlex takes them on with zero effort, right? That's what it does. Yeah, there, there's something I really enjoy about that too, which is you can get started with as little as four nodes. Off we go. Absolutely. Um, and, and so getting in with an appliance as an example could be a, a wonderful entry point. And, and like you said, you could do file system, you could do block, you could do specific workloads. You've got you know expertise in, in SAP HANA or, or Oracle. Like, so it Correct. really doesn't matter where you start. Um, but I also like that um, you can be behind any number of orchestrators. You could be behind any number of software processes. You've got a, a, a robust REST API. You've got Ansible modules that, that really come shipped out of the box. Um, so really, you I, I suppose you can fit into any project type literally, and it's a four-node buy-in to start, and you can scale almost indefinitely. Um, I think that's a fair way to put it. But is there an inflection point where you say, look, you can keep growing in this manner. However, let's talk rack. Or where does Apex come in? So there's, there's so many other ways to make it easy yes. for the customer to say yes. Uh, how do you start approaching some of the deal dynamics potentially that that makes it easier for the customer to really consume? So really, uh, to be honest with you, it's it's this is one of those times I love to fall back on the fact that I'm technical and I don't do the uh, financing and all that. But the truth is, 
yes, there are so many different ways to consume the technology. If we understand at the end of the day, the starting factor is as small as four nodes. And in fact, I'm, I'm going to actually correct you and say it's as small as three nodes, depending on the mm. use case and workload we're going to go. So now edge seems like a possibility, right? Or, um, you know, remote sites seem like a possibility. But then to understand that the system can grow to mass size, right? I have customers 15, 16, 17,000 nodes in a single system. When you start to understand that, that now I can take on any workload and scale with you, and every time you add a node, you're adding capacity plus performance, you can see and understand how these systems grow to mass scale. But that being said, when you really start to understand how well it best fits, it really depends on where you're at in your journey. Right? So like I said earlier, when I have a bunch of widgets on the data center room floor, if I just drop a new widget and move your workloads, that gives you some advantage, but it doesn't solve your major problem, and that is solving the cost, complexity, um, ease of use, um, so on, so on, so on. Now, I can't go into great details, but what I can tell you is under the covers at Dell IT, we use PowerFlex in our data center. So we replaced close to 80% of our data center with PowerFlex, and we took a team of X amount of individuals, and I'm just going to throw a number out there. Let's say 86 individuals, and we put PowerFlex in place. It's amazing. Once the technology hits the floor, we're able to take that team of 86 and move off almost 80 of those individuals into some other function in the data center. So now you're talking about eight, nine people are running a system that's taking over 80% of our data center room floor. How is that even physically possible? Well, you brought it up earlier, right? Talking about things like automation, infrastructure as a code, DevOps, all those key buzzwords, Ansible, Terraforms, any of the automation platforms, if at the end of the day I can talk to something like PowerFlex Manager, which is our infrastructure automation and orchestration tool, and I can talk to that using all of the APIs under the covers, I can automate 100% of this system completely. So now you're talking about, hey, I brought in a new technology, I moved all my workloads, I'm automating that technology, and I have created a completely lights out data center. So mm -hmm. now if somebody's listening to this podcast and they're, you know, they're the CIO, CTO, or dealing with a CFO and they're saying, hey, we're running rich on a cost perspective in the data center, you can say, guess what? No longer can I do more with less, but I can actually do more complex with less because I have a system that I can automate. 100% of its functionality and provide better value to my customers. That's where PowerFlex really starts to shine. It really starts to come after some of those workloads that are hard for other technologies to go after. And that's really the key. That is um, pretty compelling there, Steve. So you, you, you highlighted the um, example of Dell uh, right. eating its own dog food here and, and being able to shrink down the team of 86 down to, uh, down to by down to six people as a hypothetically. Now, if I was to build on that as an example with say an enterprise institution that currently has, you know, their, their set of data centers and uh, what have you uh, out there with a, a rigmarole of, let's just call it different infrastructure, not, not, not Dell. And at the same time, they have built and gone to the cloud in a completely cloud native stack. And by cloud native, I mean AWS, CSB, or Azure uh, uh, technology base and technology stack. And they're looking to transform. And they are highly automated. They And throw in your mix of, hey, with the whole Broadcom acquisition, yeah, maybe it don't want to be on Broadcom VMware anymore either. How do you bring all of that together in, in a story with PowerFlex, or what would you pitch to uh, to the CIO, CTO of, hey, we can do more complexity with less and hit on all of the efficiency aspects of things in that transition and, and support your overall journey to the cloud? Yeah, so, I mean, that's a great question. In fact, that makes up probably 90% of the calls that I'm having right now. Is that customer in that it's complicated state with Broadcom? They're living in this, I'm half on-prem, half in the cloud, or maybe they've made that journey, all cloud, all on-prem, I don't know, right? But mm -hmm. those make up the vast majority of the calls I'm in. So then the question becomes, what is it you're trying to accomplish, Mr. Customer? Is, is your goal, hey, I need to set myself up for the next thing, transition to the next form of my data center? Or is it, I need to figure out how to make all this stuff work together? right? Either way, it doesn't really matter to me. And here's why. Because of the flexibility, 
sorry for the pun, of PowerFlex, it gives me the ability of doing it any way you need to consume it. So I have customers today who live completely on-prem and want to start experiencing the cloud. But what the problem is, and goes back to the old adage, you know, the terms of cloud to ground and ground to cloud. Right? A lot of customers aren't familiar with those terms, but the truth is when you think about customers who bid off on the cloud in the beginning, right? they retooled all their applications for cloud services, right? whatever AWS was using, whatever is behind Azure, whatever is behind GCP, they retooled all their applications and their people. Well, let's be honest, they got halfway down the road and they said, oh my gosh, costs went through the roof, or this is harder to run in the cloud, or I see value bringing it back on-prem. Well, I'm sorry, you already took a big bite out of the apple. There's no way to bring that workload back without retooling it again. So that's the cloud to ground approach saying, hey, I want to run these workloads on-prem and do it with the cloud native stuff on an on-prem system. Well, PowerFlex solves for that problem, cloud to ground. But then the inverse is the customer that's sitting here today that said, hey, I skipped on that whole Apple bite because I was afraid what it meant, but now I have a challenge. I have all these mass workloads in the data center. I got to run them in the cloud, but I need the performance that I get on-prem in the cloud, and I can't afford to do that with something like AWS, Azure, or GCP. Well, this is where PowerFlex also – it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife. It bends very quickly to say, great, put the PowerFlex software in the hyperscaler. No specialized hardware, no specialized configuration. We're dropping it on traditional instances that any of the hyperscalers have, and now I can get on-prem performance in a cloud world, cross-region, cross-availability zone, cross-clouds, from on-prem to cloud, from cloud to cloud. It doesn't really matter. That software allows for such mass flexibility that I can catch a customer in whatever cycle they are in, on-prem, in cloud, in both doesn't really matter because PowerFlex allows for that flexibility under the covers. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Make, yeah, makes beautiful sense. And we're seeing it more and more. We're seeing folks say, hey, um, we want to be able to go to the cloud and back. And which often means if I really want to do this, then I probably want to containerize. If I want to containerize, I probably want to put everything on, on Kubernetes. If I want to do that, it's pretty complex. So I'm going to have to orchestrate it somehow. And what am I doing? Am I going to put a type one hypervisor in? Am I not? And, and so all those decisions, you say it doesn't matter, right? We're, we're, we're abstracted from that, which I love. Um, whatever makes sense for you, we're prepared to help you. And then I, I, I keep coming back to there's something that you've always done well, which is let me also manage the minutia. Let me manage the, you know, encrypting those drives. Let me manage quotas. Let me manage individuals. Let me tie it into your existing processes. It doesn't matter if you've got a COTS um, uh, layer that you want to tie it into, or if you've got some open source that you forked and, and you've, you're now intersourcing, this can work with all those pieces. So, so I love the fact that you've taken that complexity away. And again, I think you're probably introducing a lot of features that aren't available in the cloud. You're introducing a lot of features that are absolutely necessary to manage that, that enterprise customer with, uh, with what, what they're going to need to really get their arms around the estate. So I think the flexibility is, is so interesting. It's almost, it's almost comical, where do I start, right? I keep coming back to, all right, I can do, you want that project, I, I'll get you on that project, or you want over there? I, like, yep. I almost wanna step back and say, hey folks, like we really need, let's pick a few things here because I can solve in such a broad manner that let me prove it across a broad set of capabilities. But that to the cloud and, and cloud to ground, I think is a real use case that we're seeing a lot in our customers um, and, and one that I think you make literally uh, push button easy. Which is, which is pretty fantastic, yeah. Yeah, I would also throw out there, and you touched on it earlier, the challenge that we have right now, right? If say, so say customer has struggle with the Broadcom relationship, you know, as I said, it's a, a lot of customers, it's the knee jerk reaction. You know, my renewal went from X times 30% or 40%, right? And oh my gosh, I can't afford this anymore. I need to find a new solution. Or maybe it's just, hey guys, I wanna prepare for whatever's to come. You know, maybe I don't want lock-in anymore. Maybe I don't want uh, a specific hypervisor that I'm all in on that one hypervisor. Maybe I want multiple, or maybe I want flexibility in how I do business. One of the things that PowerFlex is great at is it doesn't promote lock-in because at the end of the day, again, I don't care what hypervisor you want. Now, what I find interesting right now is I haven't found one person on the planet who can step up and say, here's the next VMware. 
right? I just can't find it. Yeah. Right now, I hear all sorts of them. Proxmox. I've heard, uh, you know, Hyper V. People going Apex or going into, um, you know, Azure's cloud. I mean, I, I hear them all. But the problem is, is that no customer has the the crystal ball or can read the tea leaves. So, what options do you need to be able to take on any potential hypervisor? You need an infrastructure that can support that without just buying another widget to put on the data center room floor. That's another attacking point in how and why PowerFlex makes sense, because I can be running my VMware stack in the same system as I'm running my Hyper-V or I'm running my Proxmox or I'm running my fill in the blank, right? Yeah. Gives you as a customer the ability to expand and grow in a very elastic way till you figure out what your plan is, right? What retooling is going to be needed? What, uh, you know, where do I get out of the vendor lock-in and move to the next option? So just calling that out as a point, it is something that oftentimes comes up, but it's not something that a lot of customers can grasp because they think, okay, here's my widget of X and I need to go to my widget of Y if I'm going to switch. And how do I do that? And how do I tie the two systems together? That's where PowerFlex solves that problem. Yeah, I think it is interesting. I mean, I, we, we don't have to cover it here, but I think uh, even the idea of Apex makes it a very easy choice to consume. Every purchase, Apex has flexibility within that in terms of a program. Um, so having having a consumption model that can that can marry whatever business uh, imperative you have, I think, is a, a fantastic point as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whether it's whether it's you know, hey, I need to burst out, scale down, scale up. Maybe use this flex on demand is a perfect fit for that, right? Um, maybe it's a situation of hey, I need somebody else to manage my gear and not me. Yeah. I got to get out of the opex, move to you know capex or vice versa. All of those situations or challenges the customers face can be solved through the Apex solution, right? Whether it's a financial model, whether it's an operational model, whether it's a cloud-based model, we have options that can solve for that under the covers. So one one honest question I would have, what do you what do you run into the most in terms of as you would now approach and say, look, I, I almost don't care what you have. I've got a solution for you and it's the same solution. I'm gonna trumpet this over and over and over. This works for you. Um, what is the biggest hurdle that, that you feel we have to climb here? Is it, is it just utter disbelief or no, you can't possibly <laughs> get your arms around my mess? Um, how, how do you approach that? And, and, and what, is, what, what, are you, what are we up against when we go to market? So you're, you're spot on, right? I mean, customers, you know, it, it sounds like I'm the next snake, snake oil salesman, right? Like I've got a hammer and everything's a nail. Right. And that's a challenge in itself because inevitably the belief factor is huge. Customers want to not only believe you, but they want to see it. And that's one of the challenges we have the most is how do we represent what PowerFlex can do in the current demand or challenge that you're facing? And that's one of the struggles, right? Because I just sound like yet again, another snake oil sales salesman promising you the next great thing, even though you're not sure about it. So. What we oftentimes spend more time doing than not is proving, right? Is vetting it out. You know, I oftentimes tell people I should have been born in Missouri because I, I can I can talk a great talk. But the fact is at the end of the day, till you see the product in action, you just don't believe it, right? The the one thing I love more than anything is to be on the phone or in the data center when you run that comparative workload against technology XYZ. And the customer says, holy crap, mm -hmm. or you hear that, oh my gosh, you know, that, that gasp of realization that, my gosh, this thing is the fastest thing I've ever seen. Now, how does it handle X? Now, how does it handle Y? And now you can start having that conversation of bring it on, right? Bring on the workload, bring on the problem or the challenge, and I have a way to solve it with PowerFlex. It takes away that feeling of, you know, uh, uh, jack of all trades master of none because you quickly see it is a jack of all trades and can solve many different workloads now i'll be honest there's many times i have to climb on a call and say why it doesn't make sense right and that's a hard conversation to have because it sounds like it can do everything but there are things that we will say to a customer listen powerflex isn't the right fit here right this isn't the right place for powerflex even though it does a lot of cool things it's better for you to look at something else in the portfolio, something else in the technology bag that I have that does a better job. Does that make sense? It does, it does. And is it easy to stay in that ecosystem? I imagine it is, right? You, you've got lots of yeah. power portfolio items, uh, even in the storage space alone. Um, so I imagine you have a fit, right? Even if it's not flex. 
We do. I mean, the, the the bag, as you would say, or the the portfolio that we have is massive, right? Dell is massive in a lot of areas. And what's so cool about that is I have other widgets to plug into this solution. But what gets even cooler is the interoperability of those systems, right? So if I'm going down the path and the customer says, hey, Steve, I need a mass amount of file, just big old, you know, deep wide storage to hold all my file data. We're not talking performance. We're talking just straight up file. I'm going to say, great. PowerFlex plus Isilon or PowerScale is the right answer to solve this problem, right? Or they say to me, hey, Steve, love the performance of PowerFlex, um, but I'm going to need some other things. Fill in that gap. It gives me the ability to pull from the portfolio to plug in some other component, or sometimes I have to just say, hey, somebody's got me beat. Right. Somebody else does this better than me. Right. When we start getting into things like metro replication or synchronous metro, right, where I need to do stretch clusters or just rich data services to that level, I'm going to bow and I'm going to say, take a power max. They've been doing it for the beginning of time. Right. They they were here when God formed the earth. You're going to have a power max. Right. That's my feeling. Right. I'm going to pivot to them and say, go. So it's really great to have more things in the portfolio that I can depend on when PowerFlex may not be the right fit. Yeah. Steve, a lot that was covered today. Um, I'll say from parting thoughts, this uh, this exemplifies in, in this talk track that you have, exemplifies a head's own investment and belief of Dell's PowerFlex solution and the investment that we've made in terms of having a, a trained workforce of architects and engineers uh, that rivals, uh, I guess we outrival uh, even uh, Dell in internally, as I've heard it, in terms of people that have uh, uh, vested up on this. Are there uh, additional areas that uh, you're aware of from um, or that we haven't covered today? Um, what, well, whether it's areas or that uh, we've not covered, or perhaps some other stories that you might want to weave in, some other case studies or anything like that with with a head. Yeah, I, in fact, I, I want to touch on that one specifically. So it was an awesome, in fact, it touched the heart more than anything, was to sit in Dell Tech World last year and see a head taking on uh, a massive challenge of stepping up and showing, hey, guys, not only are we biting into this PowerFlex thing, we believe it, but we're going to write an entire automation platform on top of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And to see you guys step up, take a, uh, an entire session in Dell Tech World, pack out the room so the people were pushing people down to get into the room just to see how did you fully automate a platform like PowerFlex and remove the human factor was insane. Um, I love getting out there in front of customers who say, hey, I don't have a relationship with a partner. I don't even know a partner that I trust. And to be able to say, guess what? I got a partner for you, one that will take a platform like PowerFlex, fully automate the technology, drop it in your data center room floor, and can do everything from life cycle the system for you to do day-to-day -day operations type, day two type stuff on a daily basis. It blows their mind to think that a partner's gone to that level in this type of a technology. So you know, hats off to y'all, kudos in every way to be able to see a partner step up to that level and really take on a platform and run with it. It's a differentiator. It is something that, you know, again, warms my heart to be able to say I have a customer that I can give an end-to-end -end solution to that rivals what even Dell can do in some cases. Awesome. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, that, that really does uh, speak to the overall investment and partnership we have with Dell and, and look forward to progressing that further, uh, not only in, in the clients that we represent, but others across, across the country. So Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Steve, thank you so much for joining us here on the Incubator Podcast uh, and with Ahead. And uh, we look forward to working with you. You betcha.